Hey guys, how's everybody doing out there? Today's episode, just like I said in the title, the reason I decided to move out here to Mexico. Now, I know some of you guys out there already know part of my story. Um, and there is a lot of layers to this story as to why I finally made the decision to move out here. Now, for those of you, for most of you guys out there, you guys kind of know that when I decided to move out here, it was more like kind of like on a whim type of thing. And it kind of happened uh, almost spur of the moment. I was kind of put in a situation where I didn't have much of a choice but to kind of leave and I ended up here. But if you really must know, it was a longer process than that. In fact, it was something about, it was something more like years in the making more than anything else and it wasn't until I had a major situation you know um, fall upon me that finally made me um, make that decision final it's as simple as that it's really not um, I mean that's basically how it went down you know so you know just to give you guys a little background so if you guys have been watching the last couple weeks or been watching the last several months actually you guys know that I've been dealing with a situation um, over in Texas um, you know that whole um, legal um, situation that again just from watching it just from a few days ago um, you guys know I already rectified that whole situation I won my case case dismissed that whole deal you know let's not talk too much about that because again if you guys want more context to that just check out the older videos when I talk about that stuff, about the oops, little something a little slippery down there. But anyways, um, to give you more context on that, but my my whole uh, wanting to move out here to Mexico, it basically started um, I, I want to say two years ago. I literally want to say around two years ago when I first encountered that Texas situation you know the first one of my first reactions after you know I was driving through North Texas and I got arrested for resisting arrest you know wrongfully kidnapped wrongfully uh, put through the ringer you know wrongfully accused you know that whole fucking deal literally right after that the, the taste the sour taste was so bad in my mouth that from that moment on I, I wanted to fucking move out to Mexico. Literally, I wanted to just, that's it, I was done. I, I was just done, I was just done. Because up until that point, you know, up until that point, um, you know, I was just your typical, your typical stacker. Which by the way, it's something that's uh, coming back into style now. Like just talking about, okay, let's talk about crypto, gold, silver. So I was your typical gold, silver stacker, your typical um, prepper, your typical, you guys already know who these guys are in the United States. That's who I was, okay? That's, I was just a prepper. Uh, I had gold and silver, I had all that shit. And then eventually I came across cryptocurrency and that, you know, um, added an extra other level to all this by the way very windy apologize i'm waiting on that windsock they're making this extra special for me okay i'm getting an extra special windsock just for me okay so that's who i was okay and so i was already pretty much at a point in my life where i had had enough of the us a the ussa all right the ussa and its government it's overreach the rule, raw law, is it the rules and regulations, you know, just the insanity of what our country has become. And it was not just our country. Look at this. Look, I love this car. I love these cars. I can't wait to get this. By the way, man, it's all about manifestation. I'm going to get me one of these. I don't know what color. I don't know where, when, but I'm definitely going to be getting me one of these, especially if I'm still living out here in Mexico, which I plan to. But before I distracted myself, like I was saying, I was already at a point where I was done. I was just fucking done. I was just looking for an excuse to just finally put that last nail in the coffin and get the fuck out. And when that happened to me, that's what that was. You know, when that happened, that shit happened to me in Texas. That was basically it. You know what I mean? I was done. 
I couldn't, I, I was just not even gonna participate within this because right after the whole situation in Texas happened, I still had all my money for the most part, not all of it, <coughs> because I already took some. <laughs> you, know, you know, I, I needed to get out of jail, right? So you already know how that is. They shook my, they shook my ass down before they let me go. Um, so, you know, at that point, I was already fucked. They already took a huge chunk just for my freedom. And, you know, eventually if I keep fighting this, not only are they going to take everything away, but I'm, I'm going to be in negative. And, um, and I'm going to start having to figure out a way to get more money in order to pay for this shit. All right, look at all this traffic. A lot of traffic. A lot of traffic today. Hi. Anyways, so I already knew. I already knew that this shit was gonna cost me an arm and a leg. And that even though I had the financial situation to take care of it, I knew that this was gonna take its toll and it was gonna, it, whatever I had wasn't enough. And sure enough, that was exactly how it turned out. But before I made the decision to stay, my first decision was to get the fuck out of Dodge. Like, literally. I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I already know what the fuck is going down. You know, me and my paranoid ass. You know, the U.S. is going down. The dollar's going down. The whole fucking thing is going down. I don't want to fucking be here anyway. There's a blessing this guy's. Let me get the fuck out. And that was literally the plan. I was literally already just like, fuck it, let me get the fuck out. And uh, I'll deal with it later or, or never. And the reason I didn't leave was literally because all my friends, all my friends, all my family, all of it. I'm telling you, you know what I mean? The ones that were telling me to go, they didn't have, my, they didn't have um, the right interest in my mind, even though I thought that they did at the moment. And in fact, it was the other way around. Literally everyone that told me to stay had their, you know, my interest in mind. You know, my, they, they were telling me the right thing to do. And, uh, and they stayed. I literally stayed in the U.S. And I, and I fought that shit. I paid it all off. Again, I just finished paying it off the other day, as you guys already know. And there was a long ass and horrible, horrible, horrible experience and horrible journey. And uh, literally all the way up through, all the way through it, I was like telling myself, especially towards the end, you know, once already I already exhausted all my funds and I was back in the workforce, working like a fucking slave, just making pennies a day. And um, the, only, the only happiness I found was when I would make these videos every day in Los Angeles and that shit. And it, it was just kept getting worse, you know, so. I was already at a point where, I, again, I, I was only like a few steps away from living on the street because of this whole situation in Texas. So when it came, you know, I want to say about a year ago, a little over a year ago, or about a year ago, a year ago, literally a year ago, um, my roommates told me, it was like a, a year and a month ago, whatever, some shit like that. My roommates told me, hey, um, we, we're all going back to Alabama, Mississippi, wherever the fuck, Louisiana, wherever the fuck we came from. And um, yeah, so you need to find a new place to live. Because I was, again, I was living in LA. The only way to really live in LA is with like 100 roommates. You already know the deal. So I was like, oh shit, what am I gonna do? So I just started to looking for a place. I could not find the fucking place. And then I was like, you know what? Let me see, because again, I, want, I, want, I was already at a point where I was beyond drained mentally. And I said to myself again, look at the situation that I'm in right now. I can't even find a place to live. I'm gonna have to, no, I have no other choice but to either leave LA, which wasn't really a plan. I really didn't have resources to do that. Or B, live out of my fucking car and hope for the best. And all the while, all the while, while this is going on, I still had to figure out a way to keep making ends meet I still had to figure out a way to call my bonds lady every week and I just call her ass but make sure that I had my money and if you guys know the laws and you guys know what's up if I remained within the US if they woke up one morning and they woke up with the wrong attitude they could send fucking dog the bounty hunter after my ass or if I didn't comply with them you know with their insane um, demands they could just send dog the money hunter after me and then all the hard work all the money all the everything that i put into that 
where boot would have been gone and that was like a major thing in fact i was scared all the time and so while i was kind of making enough money and kind of having my head above water um i was like well you know i can kind of i know i can keep them at bay with money but the minute that the money flow was kind of starting to come in negative i was like man i'm not going to be able to keep them at bay anymore because any little misstep and i'm off i'm off to jail for god knows how fucking long i'm you know definitely I'm throwing away, you know, in, in one of those cells that are throwing away the key and you'll probably never see me again. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, but for a lot of people out there that know exactly what the fuck is going on, it's not crazy at all. You guys, we see this shit every day. So that was my major, major fucking concern. So, by the way, look, see, wheelchair accessible. It is wheelchair accessible out here. There's some some, uh, some of you guys were asking me a little bit. Um, but anyways, so as I was saying, I had a choice. I had a choice to make. And so my choice was to, you know what? Let me get the fuck out of Dodge now. I didn't get out of Dodge at first because... By the way, yeah, let's go back to that real quick. So, during that time, I was struggling with the fact of like, damn, dude, should I leave? Should I not leave? You know, this two years ago. And I decided to stay in order to fight it. Thank God I stayed because if I would not have stayed, that situation would have gotten definitely out of hand. And um, it would have, um, it would have um, not allowed me to travel freely. Not allowed me to travel freely with my passport. Not allowed me to go back into the U.S. You know, warrant out for my arrest. You know, federal. You know, like a Texas federal crime. You know, just so many horrible, horrible things. As if I would have, uh, you know, committed murder, or if I would have fucking stole millions. You know, just some fucking horrible, insane crime. Which again, all this was just because again. Um, I resisted arrest you know all i did was ask them why are you arresting me and that's it that was grounds for them to ruin my fucking life just so you guys know again i know i gotta re repeat that as many times as humanly possible because it's just uh, still insane to me and then how most people out there they, they don't see anything wrong with it but anyway so at that point i was already you know starting to get hassled by them you know this and i were going back to a year later so by that point, you know what I mean? I had already taken care of just about everything and everything was, uh, you know, moving smoothly up until, you know, about a year ago where my financial situation wasn't what it was anymore. And at that point, um, as I was struggling, they were kindly letting me know, hey, you better get your shit on point or we're gonna fucking come after your ass and we're gonna fucking put you away for a long time. So I was like, fuck this shit. So that with, okay, so then when all of a sudden my roommates told me, hey, you got to find a new place to live. My financial situation wasn't what it was. You know, the whole, um, you know, the whole other situation in Texas was just getting way out of hand, especially just because I didn't have the funds for that. I was like, man, I don't, I don't really have much of a choice here. I mean, even if I were to stay in the States, you know, again, any day I could literally wake up or get stopped for a traffic ticket or whatever. And I'm gone. I mean, they're taking my shit back. They're taking my ass back to Texas and uh, it's over. So I was like, bro, get the fuck out of here with that shit. So, hey guys, sorry about that. Way too hot, way too humid out here. Camera turned off. You already know the drill. But as I was saying, as I was telling you about my story, um, you know, when I started realizing all that, you know what I mean? That I was literally, my back was up against the wall. I didn't have a choice. I was like, you know what? I, I know I, I've already done a lot of homework in, in the year prior and then some about moving abroad, moving to Mexico. Because again, just in case, you know, I already knew that worst case scenario, I could always leave the country and I would be safe. So that's what I decided to do. And, um, you know, I'm just giving you the, the short version here. So I decided to fuck it. I packed up all my shit. And uh, within a two week time span, I figured out how to, you know move out here i found the place and the, the whole deal and then it was uh you know it was just very quickly how i ended up out here now once i got out here it was a little difficult for me to you know make phone calls and and do certain things right off the bat because again i'm in a new country things were very different you know i eventually figured everything out you know and hence i've made videos about a lot of these things and so on and so forth but um one of the you know one of the things that i really realized you know as soon as i got out here and i had to call my bonds lady the first time and i was calling from here and they realized i was calling from here holy shit were they pissed and then when they were pissed and then they were fucking you know like demanding all this shit and telling me i had to be here and all this other crap i'm gonna see if i can run across i was telling them all right hold on a second i was telling them hey 
you know, fuck you, you know, part of my friends, but I was telling them to go fuck themselves. You know, I'm in another country now, and now the cards are on my table. Now I have the fucking power, and they better fucking, you know, uh, um, know their fucking place, or they're never gonna fucking hear from me again. And then all of a sudden, things switched, because they knew. They knew that at the end of the day, all they wanted was my fucking money, more than anything else. And um, that I, all of a sudden I had the power, so either A, you know, they had to listen to me now, and we were on my terms, so that I can pay that shit off and I can get my dismissal and get all my paperwork, or B, they're just never gonna fucking hear from me ever again, and they're not gonna get any more money or any more anything from me. And then all of a sudden things were changed. Things are totally different. Um, I had the power, sure. I didn't want to fucking be, you know, part of this whole thing. I didn't want to, let me see if I can see, oh, it's fucking hot. But I was like, fuck this shit. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm the one that's going to be in, in power now, you know what I mean? Especially if that, that conversation that also said a lot, you know, that I was 1 billion percent correct in making that move at that moment in time. I was also realizing that, thank God that I, I, I took care of all my, all, of everything I took care of legal, legally before I left. Because then it really would have been really bad. I would have been stuck out here and I would have had to get probably like another identity and God knows where the fuck I would have been or ended up. But the reality is that, you know, thank God that everything, you know, traversed or it took place the way it did. And in the end, in the end, you know, everything happens for a reason. It was just going with the flow and that whole deal. But look, the point is that like I finally made that move to move out here. And it was, again, I know like it's very, very, very difficult for a lot of you guys. You guys watch my videos all the time and you guys want to know how to move out here. You guys really want to move out here. You guys want to, you know, you're doing everything humanly possible. But, you know, you never, you notice that I, I really don't ever like push you guys or get mad or blame you for not making that move. Because, again, I understand how incredibly difficult it is. If you, if you find it difficult just moving from house to house in your own city, imagine moving from to another country, literally another language another all kinds of customs the whole nine you know all that shit so i totally get it to me it was just either that or else you know i was gonna have a, a big culture change regardless you know whether i was gonna live out here in mexico or live on the streets in skid row it didn't matter but something was gonna fucking happen and so i was just telling myself you know what i have the power i can make the decision i can fucking choose where i want to go and end up and all that and i said you know what i think i'm gonna i can do a lot better out here I think that, you know, my it's just everything will be better out here. And God damn, God gosh darn it, you know? Sure enough, sure enough, you know what I mean? The best, one of the best, if not the best decision I've ever made in my whole entire life was moving out here. And you guys already know um, w why I love living out here, you know? There's like, I'm, I'm, I've made a bunch of videos, you know? Mainly, it's because of the freedom, the liberty, um, you know, on so many other things and how that can be also you know described you know remember freedom and liberty isn't just freedom and liberty it can also mean the fact that i don't i don't need as much money i don't have to fucking work 80 hours a week i don't have you know what i mean for somebody else and there's so many more things that add to the whole freedom and liberty thing but basically it's also freedom and liberty you know whereas to i tell people about my story or i tell people about some of your stories out there as to how you got arrested or you guys got in trouble the shit that you're dealing with your family members are dealing with and 99 percent of all mexicans out here unless they've been to the u.s they all think that it's insane that these things are actually happening over there because they would never happen here ever 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 and um and this just says so much you know and uh you know, basically, again, you know, just to, you know, come full circle, why I moved out here. Oh, my ass is starting to burn a little bit. It's so hot. But anyways, you know, just to come full circle as to why I basically moved out here, why I'm out here, is basically because out here in Mexico, you get to actually live your life. And that's basically it, okay? And it really doesn't matter what you do. Sure, it helps a lot if you can... Uh, you know have dollars you know make dollars and uh you have some sort of um you know income you know like income source you know outside of you know uh the regular income source you know meaning you have like a government check or you got retirement you got a pension or you're like me you know like a traveling nomad and all that good stuff because i've been a traveling nomad for a while um it's just cheaper to be a traveling nomad out here but the point is that that would make things a lot easier but regardless you know no matter what you 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 know you, you guys can can do it again um it's all about a better way of life you know out here 
I get to truly be me. Out here, I've gotten to really blossom. Out here, I've gotten to really dedicate myself to what I really wanted to do. Out here, I've gotten to like enjoy life to its fullest. Out here, I've been more at peace than I've ever been. Out here, I mean, again, you know, I can, I can continuously talk about all the positives of being out here, moving out here. And um, they're all totally worth it, man. They really are totally worth it. And, uh, and everything happened because of how it happened. It was just, um, it's really hard to kind of, you know, looking back at the whole situation, it's like, wow, how the fuck did I really end up out here? But it was all like a, a course of events. It was just like uh, many, 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 many things that led me to... Again, guys, I got really interrupted again. Sorry about the overheating. But just to come full circle one last time, um, the main reason I moved out here is, you know, uh, again, I mean, not the main reason, like, the reason I ended up out here was a series of many, 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 many events that got me here. But I had been thinking about not just living in Mexico, but living abroad for a very long time. And it just, eventually, it worked itself out. And the same thing is what I tell all of you guys out there, that everyone out there, you know, has a different reason for wanting to live abroad or live out here in Mexico or whatever. And um, whatever that reason is, again, you know, just keep focused okay just keep your eye on uh, you know just keep your ideas as to why you want to move out here you know don't ever like you know get discouraged or don't ever get like um you know anything you know what i mean like that because um i'm gonna tell you right now when you least expect it is when things all right the camera's starting to annoy me a little bit it's not even that fucking hot all right i think it's just the humidity but again i just want to end this shit here okay so i can put an end to this so i can continue with my day but look guys again we really don't know how we end up or we're gonna end up where we want at the end of the day but it's just like as long as you keep your head down keep working towards that goal and just keep focusing on what you want and and, and all that good stuff and you'll get there you'll definitely get there because again i'm here everything i've ever wanted and dreamed of is literally here and i didn't know it was here but i had to get here and it was a complicated path as to how i got here but i'm so fucking happy and glad that i'm here all right so just stay with it so with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Please, please uh, watch me on uh, live on Twitch and DLive and BitTube and all that good shit. And um, keep staying tuned to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you can get notified every time I drop a video. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everybody, for everything. All my patrons, all my everybody out there. I love you guys. You guys are the best. And um, that's it. Don't forget to have some Coca-Cola. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys mañana. So I think when the economy collapses next, I think there's a lot of shit being hidden right now by money in the system that is gonna be really gnarly, like really negative. I'm very, very concerned about the next downturn. Because unlike 08, unlike 01, we're all now living public lives. So all of our failures are gonna be extremely public. And most people don't have the mental strength to deal with it. So, And a lot of it is parenting stuff, so I'm trying to just I'm just not ready to write it. That's right. You know? It will be a completely public shift. It will. You know, you got a lot of people posturing that they're ballers and they're killing it, and then they're gonna lose, and they're gonna have to go work somewhere, and they're not gonna be able to hide, and it's gonna hurt. Too much. It's necessary. It's super necessary. It should have happened in 09. The reason it's gonna be so bad is we didn't actually pay the piper in 09. We built it up, we bailed ourselves out. So nobody really felt the pain. Like some people got hurt, but we didn't get hurt. I mean, we could have been in some. We weren't willing to have four years of like, most people selling their homes and rent, like we didn't go there. They did in the 30s, which is why we had 60 years of prosperity. We were too soft and not willing to go there. Which is why America will lose and look more like Europe. <laughs> it will, it's 100%. It's already done. China's gonna win. You know, they own. It's the land of honey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the land of a lot. Of, listen, I love it, but like, there, there's a. Re, I mean, Europe's in real, real, real trouble. Yeah. It's it's now a global afterthought. Yeah. I wasn't joking when I said it's irrelevant. Yeah. It is now an Asia America world, and in 20 years, it'll be an Africa, Asia America world, and Europe will be. Europe's just not a player. No. It just doesn't mean anything. We're crippled now. I mean, Germany and France and it's Europe. over, it's over. Spain. I mean like the state of Texas is more important than 50% of the countries in Europe. Yeah. 
like economically. Like it's, and America's gonna have the same thing because Europe was the global power and then it got soft and eighth place trophies become, and we worry about dumb shit and that's what America's doing now. Is there anything I can do or anybody here can do to help you with any of your goals? Yes, execute on what I'm telling you. That's it.